lose, what you're going through. But I want you to know today that you have favor. This is Favorite Nation. I am your host, Bishop Lewis Wiltshire, and welcome to another installation. And we're here to discuss and discover that even in the midst of all of the turbulence of our society and our world, our government, everything going on, you need to understand that God still favors you. So before we get right into it, let's go to the throne of grace, dear precious and loving Father. We just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the Marketplace Network, the platform to which you have anointed for this appointed time. Father, we just thank you. Bless Dr. Ken. Bless Bishop Dominique, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless all the viewers. And we just thank you right now for anointing this situation, Heavenly Father. I pray that you use me in this marvelous way, first to give you the glory and then to edify all those who will receive what it is that you have to say. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to get right into it. We're going to go to the second epistle of Peter. Chapter 1, we're going to begin at the second verse. And while we go there, we do give honor to the Father, through the Son, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We thank God yet again for the Marketplace Network, Dr. Ken Smith, Bishop Dominique. We thank God for them, marvelous men of God, anointed in all that they do. We thank God that he has given them this vision that we can reach the world through a true concept of gospel and the followers of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So we thank God for them. They actually desire to do things. This is not about money, but this is about a vision that we can bless the body of believers and at the same time do good business. And believe me, when there's good business going on, uh, no one person is blessed. Everybody involved is blessed. So we thank God for this particular network. And we thank God for all of you. And uh, also, to let me acknowledge my wife. We thank God for her, the prophet Tamara. Amen. God bless you, dear. All right. That being said, let's get down to business. We are at uh, the second epistle of Peter, uh, chapter one. We're going to start at the second verse. Uh, we've been here and, and we're going to tie in. Uh, what we've uh, been discussing from the last episode, uh, I'm going to bring it back to your remembrance in a moment, but let's get to the scriptures and then let's start our conversation. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then we're going to stop right there because I want to put a little emphasis. Uh, now, on the last conversation, we had tied in the whole concept. Um, according to Proverbs 3, uh, I believe, uh, chapter 3, verse 3, where we understand that if we hold to the things of God and what he says, that not only will we receive favor from God, but we will receive favor from God and man. And then we shift it over uh, to Second Corinthians, uh, no, first, uh, no, Romans chapter one, and from there we discovered that the whole concept of operating according to the power of God is in one's ability to operate in God's righteousness, not our own. Now, why is that? Uh, why is there a difference in that? Because all righteousness is predicated on our flesh, our existence. Uh, all righteousness is of filthy rags. So now what Jesus has consequentially done in all uh, in the receiving of grace and salvation, uh, all that comes with that is our ability to operate according to God's righteousness. And we very well have to understand that in order to operate in his righteousness means it is based upon our knowledge of 
his word, which ultimately this text comes. So now, this is why it's critical that we understand that through his divine power, we come consequently into his divine nature, which the divine nature that we're given is that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll go to scripture in a moment. But I want to make that very clear. So notice now, according to Second uh, Peter uh, 1 and 2, notice what it says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through, watch this, the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now it's critical that you understand that everything in your existence that you desire for God to touch is based upon your knowledge of him. So that simply means the more you know, the more effective he is. This is why it is essential that we don't simply hear the word of God based upon what we want or need. We simply need the word of God based upon just having an existence altogether. This is why the church has been powerless because the church has preached a gospel that is not the gospel. The church has preached a concept that is what you can get from God versus a concept that you need God. I hope you got that. So now this is why we are not operating in any grace and we have no peace. And uh, nothing from nothing is nothing. So it can't be multiplied, but it is grace and peace is multiplied and is multiplied based upon the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now watch this. Your grace and peace is multiplied based upon the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, according to his divine power. His divine power cannot be activated if there's no knowledge. And when you have no grace, you have no peace, and let me make that real clear. You give grace as you receive grace. So there are folk who ultimately, because you've offended them, they always want to make you pay for what you did to them, and they have no grace for you. Well, the Bible's very clear. If you receive grace, you should give it. So therefore, I know you don't have any grace because you won't give me any grace. So therefore, and those who cannot give grace have no peace. Oh my God, I just hope myself. I hope you got that. So now you can't deal with people who have no peace because people who have no peace aren't peace able it's called peaceable but they're not peace able and because they are failing in the aspect of grace therefore they won't give you any because they don't have any peace within themselves now that being said watch this there is no knowledge of god because they're not they don't have any grace nor peace and they have not received his divine power watch this now watch what's critical about that the divine power, according to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now, watch this. It is through the divine power that not only gives you access to spiritual things it actually gives you access to carnal things however you cannot access the power without the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and if you do not operate according to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God you are, knowledge, are without knowledge because you Lacking mercy and peace. So therefore, you're always lacking things. Uh, your life is uh, destabilized and because your relationship with God is not right. Because you did not receive the divine power. And I, now, we went over this in the last few episodes. However, I just kind of want to set that tone for this particular conversation. So now, watch this. Through, again, there it is. Um, let me back up. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. 
that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Now, let me put a pin there, the divine nature. If you shoot over to Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called to his purpose. Now, that whole concept being called to the purpose ties in here with 2 Peter where it says, we were called, uh, he that have called us to glory and virtue. So now, when we double back and we look at Romans 8 and 28, uh, all things work together for the good to them who are uh, who love God and are called to his purpose, that he foreknew us to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, it's critical that you get this concept. That's why Jesus is our example. And as he has become the example of how man should relate to God, that is the divine nature that we must prescribe to. But the divine nature can only be a manifestation if the individual has received the divine power. How do you know if you receive the divine power? Because you operate according to the knowledge of him who has called you. Number one. Number two, you have to operate according to the knowledge of God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that happens only from someone who has received the grace of God, who gives grace unto others because they have peace. I hope that made sense. So now that's how you understand the individual who operates according to the divine nature. If you do not operate according to the divine nature because you have not received the divine power. So therefore, God can't help you in your life. And your godliness is out the window. Oh my God, I hope you got that. Now watch this. Here's the question. For those of us who declare we're filled with the Holy Ghost, you've received the divine power. Because you're operating to the best of your ability to operate and like Jesus. We're not Jesus, but we want to be like Jesus. Because of the divine power, we now can prescribe to the divine nature. Stay with me now. How is that? You, you uh, or he might be partaker of the divine nature. Watch this, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Watch this. In order for you to operate, because you receive the divine power. You're operating according to the divine nature. You can only perform that based upon your knowledge of him who called you. That only can happen if you have escaped the corruption of the world through lust. Now, let's simplify that. The world does not give you lust. The lust is already in you. The lust in you ties you to the corruption of the world. Oh, uh, I get you. You want to push back. Uh, and I feel like you don't want to go along with me. So, okay, let's go to scripture. Let's take a walk to James. And we want to talk to James for a little bit. Uh, and we want to talk to James chapter 4 verse 1. This is what it says, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even in even of your lust that war in your members, your body? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet Ye have not, watch this, because ye ask not. Now, they put a pin there. A lot of people go, you don't have because you didn't ask. But that statement alone is out of context. The focus is not you don't have because you didn't ask. 
the focus of the context is is that you're not going to get it even if you ask because why you want it is wrong to begin with oh my god i hope you just got it so a lot of people would say to me well bishop you didn't ask well i shouldn't have to ask if my lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all i could ask or even think that's record now i'm gonna reconcile that reconcile that statement for you so watch this now ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust now here's the context of this conversation the lust does not belong to the world the corruption belongs to the world what ties you to the corruption of the world that you have to escape is your lust your lust all right, uh, 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 you don't see Mike. You, I don't uh, believe you're convinced here. Um, let's see. Uh, James, I love James, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh, actually, let's go to James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed in other words no one can tempt you with something you don't want and what you want that is corrupted and not of god is based upon your lust that's in your members your body and it is not the world it's not god it's not the devil it's you Let's define lust. Lust is love perverted. God is love. Whenever you take God and you use God to get things out of the world, you've just perverted him. Now you're lusting. Uh, I can prove that. Uh, I always got scriptures. Uh, let's go to first jump. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Uh, this is coming together very nicely. First um, John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, watch this, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, here's what I want to get off the table. I want folk to understand, stop blaming the devil. The devil's not your problem. The devil is simply the deceiver and the tempter. And oftentimes he deceives you with the things you like. The deceiver tricks you into believing that the things you like, God wants you to have. What God wants you to have is him. And based upon his divine power, what he says is, is if you operate according to my will, I will deal with everything in this life and in godliness. So God is simply saying, if you operate my way, I'll take care of the things of this existence and I'll make sure you're able to maintain your relationship with me. Uh, stay with me now. In order for that to happen, you have to prescribe to the divine nature, which I also give you the power to do. But for you to operate according to that divine nature, you have to escape the corruption of 
the world. But how can you escape the corruption of the world if the world is being preached to you? Watch this. I, I, we had this conversation with Dr. Ken, uh, 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 I believe, on a, a prophetic spotlight. And he, and, he, and he asked me, he's a bishop, what word do you have for the people? And what struck me in my spirit was what's going on in our world today is we're being preached a false gospel. And here's the false gospel. Watch this. If we deal with Hebrews, by faith, only faith we can please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of diligently, who diligently seek him. Now, here's what's being preached to you. Go to God for rewards. Go to God for stuff. Because they will tell you, prosperity preachers will tell you, that your relationship with God is predicated on what you have and what you got. Matter of fact, I was told by another man of God that simply um, uh, he can't utilize me because I don't have a lot of money. His interest is not my anointing. Now, what he don't know is that uh, some of my economics took a hit when the pandemic hit like most of us. But my, I had a house bigger than his. I don't brag about it. I don't tell it. But money, I'm like Paul. I've, I've had more than enough and then I didn't have enough. I, I, I've been hungry and then I've had big giant steaks and lobsters. I've had it all. And what God has shown me in my existence is I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So I discovered that my walk with God is not based upon what I have and what I don't have. You know what? I don't have a whole lot of money today, but guess what? I'll get it again tomorrow. Because of my anointing, money is not a big deal for me. What is critical for me is that I do what my purpose is, and that's bring healing to the body of Christ and bring the truth to the body of believers so that you're empowered, that you don't fall to the deception of Satan. And therefore, now you can escape the corruption of the world that has invaded the pulpit. And you have to understand that you're being tempted by the very thing that you like, which is the lust in your members. In other words, when you are fighting with one another, that's called envy and jealousy. And folk will get up and tell you to be like me, you got to act like me. Wrong. I can have and do all things through Christ if I act like him, the divine nature. Because at the end of the day, it's critical that you understand that your favor does not come from a man. Your favor comes from God. Don't sell your favor out. Don't sell out your relationship with God. Don't sell out your word that you received because you think somebody's going to do something for you when God has empowered you with himself to do things through you. Now we are past asking anything. Now we can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power in us, which is God himself. Now you have to understand that your current situation, if it's lack uh, desire, uh, you might be hurt or brokenhearted. Uh, you might be abused. Uh, I said to someone, I said someone to the other day, I was talking to a man of God. And uh, what I said to him and what was going on in his life, I said, uh, my brother, you are, and not only are you a oxen that's muzzled, I said, everybody's riding and beating you while they're riding you. I said, now here's the consequence of you dealing with an ox who is not only starving and everybody's riding, he's got a lot of weight on him, but he's being beaten. Two things, either that oxen will lay down and die, you'll give up and lose hope, or that oxen will commit wrath. He will buck and kick and kill everything around him. He will buck people off his back and stomp them to death. Now, here's what I'm getting in the spirit. Many of you are that oxen. Not only are you muzzled, but everybody's riding you. 
And not only are they simply riding you, they're kicking and beating you while they're on you. And what I'm perceiving in the spirit as uh, you're listening to this uh, program right now is that God, who is giving you mercy and peace, he is going to multiply that in the name of Jesus. And you're going to now receive a peace that passes all understanding. It's so wonderful in your mind, you're trying to figure out why am I not killing everybody when everybody's giving me a reason to operate in wrath? Because God has now infected you with his peace. It doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't have to make sense because when things happen for you that brings you to a place uh, that doesn't make sense, that's God. God doesn't make sense. He makes faith. Uh, we've heard that before. And so now, simply speaking, watch this. I am now praying that grace and peace multiplied in the name of Jesus because you have received that divine power. And now what you're going to do in the name of Jesus is you're going to tap into that divine power right now. And that very God who has now filled you with himself, which is called the Holy Ghost. He is going and he has provided, and you're going to start seeing where he's provided for not only the things of this life, but godliness. Not only has God kept you, you're going to discover that your life is not as bad as you thought, and your heart is not as broken to the point that it can't be healed. So now, watch this, because of that multiplied grace and peace, your heart now becomes healed. You start seeing that God has provided your needs. Now, based upon that, watch this. You will stop asking God for money and stuff. And you're going to start asking God for him. Because you're going to completely trust God. And you're not coming to him for the reward. You're coming to him because he's God. If you're with the rewarder, the reward automatically comes. When you're operating in that power that is given, the things of this life will be manifested. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Watch this. Take no thought for tomorrow, for the evil tomorrow will take thought of itself. Watch this. Focus on being excellent today. Do the will of God this day. Focus on what God has told you to do. And let God deal with what's coming tomorrow. You're trusting God. Be excellent in the moment. Be excellent in what you're supposed to do. And operate with the power. Don't operate in your existence. Operate in the power, which is that divine power. Watch this and you will perform that divine nature. And you're able to walk in a peace. You're able to give grace and mercy on folk who have wronged you horrifically. Why? Because you have escaped the corruption of this world because you have dealt with the lust in your own members. Now your favor is operated. Your favor now turns from simple needs to he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power in you and the power in you is him. So Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we declare that over every listener. We declare that over everyone who has subscribed to this channel, who is listening to this program right now, who will receive these words. That Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will forgive those who are abusive to them right now. And Father, you will now multiply the grace and peace in them so that they can now freely operate according to the divine power so that you, through that divine power and according to the knowledge they have of you, now you will provide for that life and that godliness 
their natural existence and their spiritual relationship. And Father, because of that, they will exude a divine nature. They will operate and act in the power of Jesus Christ. And through that, because they have escaped, no longer are they looking for a Bentley. No longer are they looking for a house. They are looking for you, God. And because their heart is clear and sincere, they're not asking out of lust. They're asking out of your will. You're going to heal that broken heart. You're going to heal that cancer right now. You're going to heal the scotoma of their mind. You're going to renew their thinking. And Father, they're going to rise up in a fresh anointing. We're going to lose power. We're going to lose that joy. We're going to lose that happiness. And Father, because we are looking to serve you, we're going to lose those finances so that we have you. We don't need money. We can just use it. But Father, we thank you right now because you are God and you are the provider of all things. And not only will you bring us to the point that the provision is met, Father, we thank you that you will cause our cup to overflow. And Father, as our cup is overflowing, everyone around us can benefit from the overflow. But our cups will never be empty, never another day. And our cups are full and overflowing because we're not seeking the cup to overflow. We're seeking the one who causes it to overflow. And Father, we thank you right now for this moment. Move in a marvelous way and give us the favor that you said we have. And Father, help us and give us the mentality to tap into that power and unlock it and manifest it for your glory and to edify our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name we declare it. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. That being said, we thank God for the subscribers, please continue, share, subscribe to this network. We are trying to get a thousand subscribers. You are already tapping into the views. We thank God for you and uh, for chiming into the Marketplace Network for all the marvelous views. Please continue. We now, watch this, we got to exceed 10,000 views now. We, we got to go beyond that. We need 20,000 viewers now. We need 20,000 viewers now. We didn't do it to 10. We good. Now we got to do 20 because God is moving in a marvelous way. And I promise you, as you not only sow, and please sow to this platform. It is a benefit and a blessing to you. Bless it. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. The uh, 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 We're getting a little fancy here. We got the QR codes going on and everything else. So give liberally as God has blessed you. Amen. That being said, please subscribe, comment, like, share, and bless the Marketplace, not just Favorite Nation, but the Marketplace Network family. We thank God for you. We thank God for your views, your comments, your sharings. We thank God for Dr. Kim. We thank God for Dominique, Bishop Dominique, and the Marketplace family. We thank God that he is God all by himself. And above all things, we give glory to our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus that makes all of this possible. And so until we meet again on the Marketplace Network, this is the favorite nation. I am Bishop Lewis Wiltshire. We'll see you on the next one. God bless you. Watching the Marketplace Network, the full gospel to the whole world.